All right, well, I haven't had a tremendous amount of time to uh, change it up yet. I am thinking about dabbling in some other formats. Uh, Popper and Vintage both interest me quite a bit. Multiplayer Brea to some extent, although when it comes to Brea, I tend to lean towards the 1v1, and the main reason is that it, it basically it pays the bills, right? I mean, that's how... Um, I I really don't... Like, I have my links for donation, and I've gotten a few decent ones, but for the most part, like... What I have is uh, is uh, fairly limited, and uh, and so I have to keep winning if I want to continue to be relevant as far as card pools goes, and especially if I'm going to dip into the other formats. So we'll start with uh, Popper most likely. Just I assume it's cheaper, but um, who knows? Anyway, talking about Brea though, I I do have some tweaks that I've made. Uh, I've basically pulled in some of the older cards that I liked, that I kind of missed having. I felt like for one thing, um, Timna, so the decks that are a little bit of a problem can be Timna, Teferi, and um, Mono Green. The Red Elemental Blasts were doing me no favors in one of those matches, in the Mono Green match, and they were certainly not, like, against Timna sometimes, uh, because the problem is they go Mana Dork, Timna, attack, start drawing cards, and you're, like, holding Red Blast. It's not very thrilling um the other thing that i noticed was against them of course they're playing lots of equipment and equipment itself can be a problem and because i had taken out disenchant and uh, what do you see here vandal blast and put in the red blast uh, i was actually having a major problem against equipment so i said tag with that disenchant and vandal blast are good against teferi and timna because of equipment and to some extent they can be good against green it depends a little bit on what's going on over there certainly disenchant more so than vandal blast just because of cards like choke uh, but uh, vandal blast uh, occasionally will catch them with like clues uh, or a couple of other things that that might be useful uh, for example well equipment is really the main one but also crucible of worlds can be extremely rough to deal with on their side of the board. You want to get off the board off of their side as soon as possible. So uh, Vandal Blast can help with that as well. Anyway, so I pulled in those cards. I brought um, Baleful Strix and Bitter Blossom back in to help with the Timna match. And the thing that makes them nice in the Timna match is that they're also, they're proactive solutions instead of reactive ones. So instead of running Wrath of Gods that just sit in my hand against a deck like Teferi, or against the green deck, I have proactive cards that get on the board and do something. In the case of Strix, it'll just replace itself and possibly either act as fuel for Brea or just draw, uh, carry a piece of equipment. And in the case of Bitter Blossom, of course, it does turn the game into a, a timed match because you can either draw your combo, which would be Skull Clamp, and then probably just take over a game with the Bitter Blossom, or, you know, pretty quickly, like the game's over just from attacking. So, um, both of those seem to make a lot of sense, so I brought those both back in. The other thing that Bitter Blossom does, and Baleful Strix to a lesser extent, is helps make the Throne of the High City good earlier in the game than it might otherwise be, as well as the other equipment. And with having said the other equipment, the other thing I brought in to help with the Tim the match specifically, but it also has splash damage against blue and green, is the uh, Sword of Fire and Ice. So I'm really equipment heavy, but Brea can actually manage that thanks to the 1-1 flyers that come with the commander, provided you can actually stick a Brea. Um, and then these extra, these two cheap extra uh, creature makers help with that as well. So those are all the changes, and I want to run through some games. Oh, I'm sorry, one other swap out. I did bring Batterskull back in as an additional support card against Timna, as well as a card that, um, because, you know, you can just set up Moat, Wall of Batterskull, but also um, because it's good against, uh, you, you do occasionally run into burn decks, and also, um, of course, it, get, it makes Stoneforge just a more powerful and more threatening card. Uh, and lastly, I brought in Spell Queller. Now, Spell Queller is in the test slot, so we'll see how it does. But I I have a feeling it might be better than I've given it credit for. So there's a couple of reasons. First of all, a 2-3 Flash Flyer is relevant against Timna, for example, uh, as a combat trick, even if you're not picking up a... Uh, like, even if you're not imprinting a card on it. It uh, can be good against counters because it acts as a pseudo-counter uh, as long as you... You have to be a little cautious. So if you say you're fighting a counter war and you spell queller, 
uh, one of their counter spells, great, you probably win the counter war and you have a 2-3 to show for it. So what you have is a super discounted, way more powerful mystic uh, snake, which is awesome. But keep in mind that some decks may be able to remove the queller at instant speed, and if they can, then they can do it in response where you, you put something on the stack, they remove the queller at instant speed, and then their counter spell pops on the stack and counters the original thing that you had, and you can do that turns later. I've done that to opponents with Brea where they've imprinted, you know, they imprint a counter spell on under spell queller, and then later in the game I play Brea, and I just leave their spell queller in play until they try to play something else. And then I kill the spell queller in response and counter it with the counter that's under it. So that is something to keep in mind. But the thing about queller that's also interesting is that um, most commanders that aren't just completely awful cost three mana, or, or excuse me, four mana or less. They're, they're queller targetable. An exception being Teferi, but then Spell Queller has an abundance of targets in the uh, Teferi match, generally speaking. So with the commanders being four or less for the most part, Spell Queller's ability to counter a commander and then make it cost two more and have a body left over that can carry all this extra equipment we've gotten here, can attack or block, can lightly pressure the opponent, um, or can be bounced with Jace or Cryptic Command for later is actually pretty relevant. Um, so that's the other thing you can do with Spell Queller is you can, you can actually Jace it back in your hand or Cryptic Command counter their next spell and then bounce Spell Queller and counter their next spell, um, making it less painful when you have to counter partners. The, the biggest problem with partners is that uh, partners, typically what will happen is a partner's deck will... You'll start exchanging with them in one-for-one -one exchanges, and you're, you're, you're trying to stop like Timna from hitting the board, for example, and then you've got to deal with their 1-3 their that draws cards or their Chrome. And so your your hand size is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller as they're alternating. Two-drop two, two drop partner that you have to deal with, three-drop partner you have to deal with, four-drop partner you have to deal with, which is just a two-drop replayed. Five drop, which is a three drop replayed, and now you've you've gone down like five cards in hand, and they haven't even played a card yet. They've done nothing but play lands and just alternate commanders, commander, 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 and because their commanders draw cards, you can't not deal with them. You have to deal with every single one of them. It's an awful position to be in. It's one of the reasons I absolutely hate partners and think it's a totally de degenerate mechanic, because well, they mind twist you early, or they jam to their opponent and, opponent and just win. Uh, but having said that, Spell Queller helps with that, where you might be able to either Queller, Queller one of them and then block Timna or block the other ones on their attack so Timna isn't drawing them cards. And that's pretty that's pretty meaningful. So I think it'll be good in that match. We'll see. So having said all that, without further ado, I did want to run through some games. Now, this first set here, this first set of five here had some good games that I want to play through on. Um, it didn't the deck was a little bit different, and I'll actually be able to sh No, I cannot show you. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a couple of changes in it. Um, very slight, but they were there, so if they come up, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. And then for the last few games, uh, I'll play it as is. And then, as you can see, I'm currently sitting in an active league. Uh, I'm 1-0. and but I sat for 16 minutes just for this game. I sat for another 21 minutes, and there's just nobody to play, so uh, I have to just uh i had to finish the 1v1 and then just play in the casuals so um for that one one two three four five it started with phil here and i get super unlucky in game two it it still went four and one which is a you know a nice prize but man it was a little frustrating so i have to mulligan so you can see i had the abyss in here um at one point my opponent's playing uh grizzlebrand so i double mulligan into this hand and you know, of course, I keep at this point. My opponent takes Tainted Pact out of my hand, which really was a bummer because I figured that was like that was the best card in my hand. Next to the Signet, maybe, just because the Signet gives me a lot of tempo. Uh, and I do have a Throne in my hand, so a card he cannot take and a hell of a recovery card. So hopefully, I was thinking I'd have time, but then with the Thran Dynamo that he just played, I have no time. If I can't stop the Grizzlebrand right now, like on the next turn, I lose. So if he has Cavern of Souls, boom, I lose. Instead, he plays an Obnixilis and passes. So at the end of his turn, I'm going to go ahead and activate Throne so I can start drawing two cards per turn. Double attack is Obnixilis, play land and pass, uh, drawing a Jace. So I'm trying to, I need to get, I, I have to watch Grizzlebrand. I have to keep him off the board. So in desperation, of course, I 
I couldn't play Jester. I end up having to do this. Mystical teaching is in response to Grizz and force a will it. I had to think long and hard about what to force with. But I end up throwing away the muddle um, because at least if I get the Jace on board, I can actually make him pick up the Grizzlebrand. And that's about my only hope. But because I drew the force spike here, I actually um, Jace and hope I find a land. And I do, which allows me to play a land and sit behind this force spike. And could not be happier to have a force spike than right now. Force spiking a 10 mana play uh, feels pretty good. So let's get rid of the Grizzlebrand for the second time. And now I've got Jace keeping pace with Obnixus, although my uh, two cards per turn off the Monarch was already doing that, but it's just much, much stronger now. I found a Dak Faden here, which is huge. I'm going to steal his Thran Dynamo, and now I don't have to fear his commander coming down. Play a Confidant and uh, get going with Jason and pass. Opponent has a uh, bad artifact mana, a Toxic Deluge, which uh, has to resolve, and then a Phyrexian Arena, which I'm able to mana leak. So he did kill my Dark Confidant, but I'm already drawing three cards per turn, so we can live with that. Um, all right. I think we might be bugging out here, but we'll see. I No, we're not. We're not. Okay, so this happens. So yeah, I play Brea, kill his Obnixilis, uh, duress a fatal push or uh, inquisition a fatal push out of his hand leaving a decree of pain and a guardian idol he plays a sinkhole which uh, resolves and then uses guardian idol uh, for my turn i'm uh manipulating my deck between jace dak and uh everything else i'm kind of manipulating my deck and i get a card on board and i do it knowing he's got the um decree of Conf of pain i'm trying to entice him into running it out and he does and for the second time in eight mana thing gets force spiked this game the force spikes proving to be extremely useful against a deck that's going over the top like that and uh with that my opponent concedes however had he not uh conceded karn would produce a creature sort of fire and ice was of course going to make another one so i was going to be attacking for nine plus two from the construct growing plus two again from the sort of fire and ice plus two again so he was actually going to take uh, so if you add it up, that's 9 plus 6 is uh, 15 exactly, and that's not even counting what I could do if I were able to sacrifice artifacts as well. So my opponent was dead on the next turn, but that was a pretty neat game. And then he, and then after a long break, as you can see, 15 minutes between these games, it pulls me right into a game against this guy to double mulligan against, and I have to mulligan, mulligan, keep. This is pretty bad, but... Hey, if I can draw a land and he doesn't... Oh, gosh, he duress me. I thought he was going to lose on the spot because of Chromatic Lantern, but he takes Vandal Blast, so I have a chance to get in this game. All I have to do is draw a lantern, and then he plays Port, and I'm thinking, oh, goodness. But he uses it to make me discard, and had I drawn a land right there, I'd probably be in this game or even possibly winning the game because I'd be able to follow up with Karn. Had I drawn a land there... I might have been able to do something, but as it stands, uh, I will save you some time because what's going to happen is I'm going to draw something like 10 more cards over the course of this game, and none of them will be land. I never draw another land for the rest of the game, and I scoop. So that was a super disappointing way to lose. Uh, you know, double mulligan into two land hand that never finds a land despite, you know, winning the top like 10 or 15 cards is pretty freaking ridiculous, but... It happens. So here we are playing against Thrasios Timna. My opponent's some early mother of runes. Big threat there, so I have to swords to plowshares that thing. Definitely don't want unblockable Timna's unkillable stuff. Although I do have sort Jite, and I thought about maybe waiting, but swords just seemed really like I if I swords now, then I can Jite later and uh and Mother of Runes can prevent Jite from actually getting counters because he can block and then give his guy pro color. So that was the other reason to plow it. So here I go ahead and equip Jite and swing in. Bloom Tender is way too powerful to leave on the board. And I was hoping he'd do exactly what he did, trade off the Wayfarer. So I have Jite counters to deal with the voice or Timna if he plays Timna this turn. So I'm just going to leave the counters there. I don't care about two damage, um, but I do care about Timna quite a bit. So we're going to sit here and guard against that. I go for a stone forge. My opponent has a spell snare, and I've got a muddled mixture to ensure that it lands. I could go get... I cannot get Batter Skull because I did not have it in at this point. However, I did have Sword of Feast and Famine. This is one area where I would have very much liked a Batter Skull. Although Feast and Famine is quite good because against Timna and Thrasios, Feast and Famine gives you protection from both commanders. And in this case, as well, from the uh, voice. So everything he's got on the board. So here, because I can only use one counter to kill his guy... 
Uh, I decide to do that, which leaves me with one counter to kill his uh, token as a follow-up if I want to. So he goes for Liliana, which is a bit of a bummer, and kills my Stoneforge after combat. But I'm glad that it happened after combat, not before. So I tithe. Um, I would have liked to have, of course, been able to attack there. Go ahead and get a Trinket Mage, and I believe I'm going to get an Opal here. Yeah, so that I can sit on that Remand, and hopefully he doesn't make me discard, because it would be a tough choice here. I'm going to go ahead and kill his 1-1 uh, one, one in response to Timna before it becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Opponent um, decides not to use Liliana because his hand is only two cards as well. Great time for me to throw down a sword and equip it. And my opponent has a removal card. I got greedy. All I had to do was play my commander here, and then this game was over. Now I'm in trouble. Opponent's hitting me and liliana but he makes a little mistake here. Well, no, I guess he doesn't. He pluses prior to casting, so I actually have to throw a Kaya, which sucks. My opponent is a Leovold. So I'm going to remand now because if I remand afterwards, that Leovold um, will prevent me from drawing a card. And he keeps uh, it in his hand, which tells me as a counterspell and I top deck Inquisition off the uh, discard. So I'm going to Inquisition away the counterspell and leave him with the Leovold, which is a little bit disappointing to do. Leovold is, yuck, a card I don't want to deal with. But I need the counterspell gone. Um, and we appear to be bugging... Yeah, legal target, no source. Okay, yeah, we're going to bug out. So what's going to happen here, though, is I... Can we skip ahead? No, we can't. What, it, what happens here is I take the counter spell out of his hand and I play my commander. I have one floating, so one, two, three, four, with exactly two left. Um, so I play my commander and then immediately kill Liliana, I believe. Yeah, I immediately kill Liliana. And so then on his turn, that way I can keep the Doretti in my hand. His turn, he plays Leovold and passes... Maybe his other commander, I can't remember, but he can't attack in. At which point I get to equip the sword and swing. He can't block. I get the cards out of his hand. I get to play Doretti. And then from there I take over the game. So it was awesome. Like, um, uh, I, I would say an awesome top deck with that Inquisition because, you know, if I hadn't been able to play Brea there, I mean, I made such a big mistake. And then if I hadn't played Brea there, it could have gone so much worse. So anyway, my opponent here is playing Teferi, some guy 604, quite a challenging opponent at all times. And I've got first turn land tax, and I'm so glad that this is a Plains and not what it used to be, which was City of Traders, because otherwise that hand, well, I guess it could have gone first turn Signet, second turn. I guess it would have been okay. Who knows? But I like I like being able to just go turn one tax, draw a four spike, which is excellent against uh, Teferi, against Blue in general. Now, I've, I've got this uh, Signet down, and I'm on, I'm on a clock to get my brain in play and kill his Jace before it flips. Otherwise, it just becomes much harder to deal with. Uh, meanwhile, I do get to tax up another card. Now, I have gotten all four of my lands at this point, so I cannot get any more. I'll lead off with Shackles, trying because I have Force Spike backing it up. Plus, my opponent doesn't know I have an Opal. And I was hoping I could I could stick the Shackles, and he would think he had an extra turn to find a solution or, or otherwise flip Jace. And then when he lets it through, I get to drop the opal and steal Jace. So there's a bit of a trick there. Um, I don't know if he had a counter or not, but um, I'll take it. So anyway, my turn. I'm going to go ahead and Night's Whisper, play a uh, fetch land, cast Stone Forge, hoping, well, hoping it sticks, frankly, but um, curious to see where it goes. And I decided to get Sword of Fire and Ice, the card that I added, um, for a couple of reasons. One, first of all, it gives my guys protection from his entire deck. And secondly, um, it has some... I want to draw uh, an actual hard counter because I'm worried about that Teferi. So on this turn, he goes for a five mana uh, time warp. And this is one of the reasons the spikes are really good against the Teferi decks is because they often tap out for a, a time walk effect on the fifth turn. And you, you can pierce or otherwise uh, otherwise uh, snare their, uh, their play. So I have to be careful here. I actually kill his Jace because if I flip the Jace, I lose control of it because it exiles itself and comes back on his side of the board. So I, I wanted to use the, the Jace for as long as possible, but at that point I, I, I could use it no further. So the Sword of Fire and Ice, the other reason I got it was so I could untap my Shackles and just kill his guy before he could take it back with the Shackles. So I found a Tainted Pact here, which is huge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, another card off the uh, sword and packed into a game ender right now. And um, 
yeah, my opponent just scoops. He knows what's coming. His lands are not long for the world. And I did play a land prior to combat, but it was okay because um, what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. The reason I played the land is so that he can't pierce the Armageddon effect. And then I'll float. I'll tap all my mana but the Signet, resolve the Armageddon effect. He, he can't effectively spell pierce it. And then once that um, resolves with the one mana I have floating, I'll sack the Azor or tap the Azoria Signet, sack the Expedition map, and go get myself something like, most likely Workshop here because I have Coalition Relic in hand. But possibly, um, it, it may, may not be Workshop just because I might have gone and got um, uh, the land that lets me draw two cards per turn, become the Monarch. Uh, so either way, though, at that point, my opponent goes down, he has no mana, and only three cards in hand, and the uh, the mono wheel player loses. And so, knowing that he scooped, he knew exactly what I was going to go get. I mean, he could have waited, I guess, to see if it was like the last two cards in my deck, but what are the chances, right? So, all right, so we play another game, and um, he actually, during the course of this, uh, offered me a pretty nice compliment, saying that um, he basically said that he thought at one point in the game that I made a bad play that potentially threw the game. And then later, but he also f added to it a compliment in which he said he thought that um, that um, my play gave me an edge when we battle it against each other, which I thought was a pretty cool. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically the sum of what he was saying. So, all right. So for the first few turns, we're just jockeying for mana in position. Um, I could have gone Brea there, slam, but uh, I was really concerned. Plus, I have this play here, and I make a big mistake. So if I had to cast Vault before I did my, my Sack Land, and then just not Sack the Sack Land, I could have not only set up the first couple cards that I wanted, but then I could have used a Fetch Land to shuffle away the ones I don't want. Um, I also wouldn't have got hit by the Fluster Storm. So that was a double mistake, because vault Vaulting and... <laughs> his follow-up, Remanding Brea and then playing Grindstone, has me very nervous, because Grindstone means that I could lose a game at any time if he can... Once he has five mana, because he can play Painter's Servant and then Grindstone me out, and that game's over. And there's a lot of ways to get Painter's Servant in Mono Blue. So I got to be. So now I have to play the game in a way that I don't want to. I'd like to be more aggressive and kind of force him to um, spend mana. But instead, I have to be cautious here. Like, for example, against this Jace, I'd really like to cryptic that. But then if he plays Painter's Ser Servant, I'm. I'm in a bit of I'm in a bit of trouble, but also I had the read that he's got a counter spell here, and I decide I'm going to teachings and protect my next play rather than um, rather than walk a cryptic into what I believe is a counter spell. And sure enough, he does have a counter spell. So I'm going to go ahead and pierce that with regret because I don't actually have enough mana to kill Jace right now, and I don't have enough mana to cryptic either. But if you're wondering what I'm doing, is I'm setting two mana up. I'm leaving two mana in play with the hopes that he doesn't see the fact that I can actually s stop myself from losing to a Painter's Servant unless he jaces Brea back into my hand. So I'm, I'm hoping that he doesn't pick up on this because I am quite concerned that I could just lose to that card. And sure enough, Tezret, Painter's Servant, three mana, activate Grindstone, and response, kill your Painter's Servant. Thank goodness. He probably jaced into the Tezzeret, but still, that's pretty scary. All right, so that's gone. One threat down. I get an Expedition map, which is nice, and I'm able to uh, attack and kill uh, Jace and uh, wound the Teferi a bit and sit on a counter, counter magic, plus an Expedition map activation cost or a Mystical Teachings flashback. Opponent reshapes away the Grindstone, which is a great way to get rid of it. I really thought about countering that because um, Grim Monolith gives him so much power, and I knew exactly what he's going to get because it, too... For Teferi, it's just the best card in his deck. So instead, I'm, I'm kind of fighting to figure out exactly what to do here. The problem is I really want to Mystical Teachings, which is a six-mana play. But I decide what I'm going to do is counter his Psyblast there and then um, bounce his Teferi for time and then map into Thorn of the High City so I can clear off the Tezzeret. And then we'll we'll fight over the Teferi in a moment because I do have the teaching slashback and if he if that counter didn't stick I I, st I wanted a board presence that's why I didn't sack Bray in response. Um, it was a risky play, but uh, you know I, I went for it anyway. So he goes for Teferi and it worked out. So because he didn't have a counter, I have a read he has no counter or he would have countered the um, cryptic. I go ahead and fetch forbid and forbid with buyback his commander here. So now I've got at least I've got a card drawing engine and forbid. So hopefully I can keep 
him off the board. And I'm going to leave Baleful Strix back because I want to pressure him with my commander, but I need Strix back in order to uh, make sure I don't lose uh, Monarch to Snapcaster. So at this point, I'm trying to get more mana on the board, but I'm also trying to... Um, I'm trying to uh, make sure that... So I'm trying I'm trying to get more mana on the board so that I can play Forbid and something. And right here, a uh, really bad situation happens because he has a Planar Lens and a Temporal Mastery, which allows him to get another sh crack at Teferi winning the game for him. And he Supreme Wills into... Hard to say, but he's plussing up Teferi. So whatever it was, it doesn't instantly win the game, so that's good. <laughs> he didn't find a Chain Veil, for example. All right, we're going to swing into Teferi here. Um, he doesn't have any way to play an end of friend Snapcaster, so I don't need to worry about that. So now I'm actually going to have to kill my commander, get the Teferi off the board, play my Confidant Pass. I want to place Temporal Mastery here. And I, I, I don't like where this goes because if he... So this was the part where he, he thought I made a mistake. So if I... So he plays Temporal Mastery right there. If I um, let it resolve and he has... Uh, he has, for example, high tide, then um, I'm going to lose because I'll, you know, whatever he plays, I, I can try to fight over it, but he's just going to get another turn. So Teferi's, or I'm, I'm not going to lose, but I'm not going to be able to stop his commander. If I counter there and he has a land, he get to play a land and then cast his commander, but he'd be tapped out. So he can untap his mana sources, but then I just get to, um, but then I get to draw three cards and also play my commander most likely. And I felt like, I felt like I could deal with that, but on the other hand, if I, on the other hand, um, if I let him take the extra turn and he has a follow up that's decent and I have to forbid it, then he gets a whole nother turn and I'm wide open. So that was the reason why I countered there, which he thought was a mistake. And as you can see, it opened the window up for upheaval. And this is a big problem because if you look at the clock, I'm at 3:47. So uh, he was chatting with me and I had to. Um, it's good tech for him to chat with me because he's got eight minutes to my three. And so uh, so the the tech for him by talking to me is that it puts me in a bind where if I foolishly respond, I will lose the game to time 100%. So I can't really respond to him unless he's actually doing something on his turn. And I definitely have to be even careful with that because if he passes priority as I'm talking, I'm still losing time on the clock. But I do try to respond back to him a little bit, uh, as you'll see a little bit later. So uh, upheaval into Grim Monolith is just awful for me. So I'm going to have to quickly decide what I want to discard. I have the Monarch on, um, you know, it's, it's set to make me uh, draw automatically. Hopefully he doesn't play a Snapcaster because then I really do lose. And luckily he doesn't. I have to actually get more mana into play right here, which is a bummer, but I want to be able to play Confidant with Leak backing it up next turn. And the only way to do that was to get more land down. So here we go. Ops in response, which is another good play because it makes me have to respond to his opt by clicking OK. And that takes even more of my time. I find my Snapcaster, so that's really nice. So I'm looking at his mana, four, seven, eight. So he's two away from his commander here. All right, so nothing too good off of that but i will get some more mana down the more the merrier at this point now i can send in with snappy or, uh confidant rather and then pass sitting on uh, snappy there trigger goes on the stack um if i hadn't set it to auto yield uh his tapping mana there might have caused me to lose more time because i would have to click okay twice but um i had it on auto yield so it's okay uh due to the clock pressures of the clock i'm actually throw snapcaster down end of turn here which opens me up to a confluence which is really nasty if you notice he had one mana floating so i lose yet more time but fortunately it opens the door for a vandal blast so he tries to lapse and i leak the lapse and it sticks boom now we don't have to worry about teferi but i meant down to only two minutes he gets a jace which is also a threat and the chain veil thank goodness for that vandal blast okay i'm gonna go ahead and play brea and immediately kill jace before it can flip and i've got f6 running as soon as that happens all right, so he's got Chain Veil, but he doesn't have his commander yet. And now the Chain Veil is actually putting him on a damage clock because um, it comes with a clause that you lose damage if you don't 
if you're not activating planeswalker abilities, which makes me beating him uh, like easier, you know, because he's losing life. So, all right, I'm going to send in. Normally, I'd try to spend all my mana in pre-combat, but I don't have time to think it through. So instead, I just transmute Muddle into a hard counter. He has no cards in hand. I'm going to Vindicate away in a land because at this point, the only threats he, he really has that I'm concerning myself with would be uh, land, and he's at 12, 10, smash... Well, first things first, Crucible. Um, so I, I play Crucible. I'm going to replay a land. I'm going to attack. Uh, I'm going to untap all my mana, you know, floating four with the sword on the stack. Untap all my mana. Opponent takes six damage, goes to four. And then with all that mana, sacrifice uh, two Signets, Crucible, and Sword of Feast and Famine or Brea, whatever. And uh, I was unsure. Like, the only reason I played Crucible here, it wastes time. You can see 42 seconds on the clock is because I knew I could play Crucible and still win. And with 42 seconds, I was actually not in the mood to try to count one, two, three, four. Do I have four artifacts or not? Uh, so um, just because it's the weird thing about Brea being a colored card in the corner of my eye, it's easy to see three silver cards. And even though my brain says I have four, like I, I just wanted to play it safe and I didn't have time to think about it. So I slammed the Crucible knowing that would be the fourth for sure pre-combat, get in there, and he uh, he scoops it up. Now he did say, uh, to his credit, that uh, if, he got in a, if I got in a winning position and it was just a matter of time, he would actually concede. Um, and I had a window in which I was able to type that I thought I could win if he didn't, basically, um, as you can see. Don't worry about... I said... Yeah, he says, don't worry about the clock. And I said, I I, I was saying I could appreciate him, and uh, but I could kill him in 50 seconds. And then, yeah. So made it happen after an upheaval, which is pretty cool. And against racing against the clock. And then lastly, I, I ended up was that five? I think that was one, two, three, four, five. So those were the five against uh, my opponents there, and uh, got me a four-one. So that's a nice, and then a nice uh, consolation prize for not getting first. It's it's a decent little prize. Uh, nowhere near as good as it used to be, though. So anyway, finally, I've got five games with the actual configuration of the deck precisely as it is. So. I'm going to run through these. It's just getting late, and unfortunately, I will be able to make a nice video this weekend, but I just don't have time to, to do anything super stellar, and I, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing what happened this evening because there was some interesting stuff. For example, this Brea mirror match. So I keep a, a very mana-heavy hand, and my opponent disrupts Talisman so that I will... So my opponent goes first and screws up. I have no idea how he does this, but he F6s his turn. So... I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> so, but I'm going to continue to play. So I go uh, first turn fountain, then he duresses the uh, talisman out of my hand. So basically what happened is it's kind of like in in formats where you can go first and draw a card. That's pretty much the difference. Uh, I'm up one card, or you could say I'm up tempo, depending on how you want to look at it. All right. So he duressed that card out of my hand, but Knight's Whisper was kind to me. Um, so he took one card and gave me two, and it found Stoneforge and a Signet. So I leverage that immediately. My opponent is jamming Serious Man on the board, plus a search for his Kanta. But I fetched, here it is again, so, Sword of Fire and Ice. The thinking being that um, Brea, um, Brea can't block Sword of Fire and Ice, nor can the tokens. And I can slowly whittle the tokens off the board, making his Brea a lot less effective and strong versus mine. And meanwhile, it does hit for a good chunk of damage, so... He searches but does not flip it. Um, is able to fatal push my guy off the board, and so now I'm not going to be attacking for cards, and he gets a Brea down. So I, I find a Mana Tithe here. I'm going to go ahead and try to play my Brea. I wasn't sure what if he had what he might have at that point, and I thought about equipping my sword, but I decided I'm going to sit back for t a couple of reasons, three reasons. First, I want to Tithe. Second, I want to Impulse. And third, I want to be able to Sack for Brea. Um... It turns out to be a really good thing. So he goes for a confluence play here. And after thinking about it, I go ahead and sack Brea and the Sword of Fire and Ice to kill his Brea. He sends in with a couple couple of Thopters, and I take it um, only because he's at a lower life total. So right now, this is favorable, favorable for me. Play land and pass. But it's also really low on cards. He flips in Ascanto, which is potentially going to be a big problem for me as it can 
that can deal with that cards low on cards issue. He goes for Brea, and I'm going to um, cryptic the Brea and attempt to draw a card. He's got evasive action. I felt like he had a counter here, but for some reason I didn't see. I miscounted, and it was because his Conta flipped. I was thinking he was. I was going to be able to mana tithe when he countered back. So I was a little disappointed to realize that that the flip this Conta mana could not. So I impulse. And I find a Sword of Feast and Famine, which I think has the potential to be good as well. At least it'll make it real hard for him to run counter spells. And also, it just he has to keep throwing away Thopters, like wasting them. And he can't use Brea targeting the 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 um the equipped Thopter because uh, Brea's ability is black, even though the Thopters are blue. So now I'm going to send in and uh, part of the thing I want to do, knowing that as a Brea player is. Uh, is uh, pressure like his actual count on Thopters. And then this is a lovely thing that happens here. He as Kanta's into Felwar, Felwar's down, smashes to see if I have like Swords to Plowshares or something. And when I don't, he taps the remaining four mana and Armageddon's right into the mana tithe. Ugh, nailed it. All right, awesome. So my turn, I draw Muddle the Mixture and I think about muddling for... um for a Jitte, but I've got I've got better things to do here. So I Snapcaster the Cryptic and Cryptic bouncing as Kanta tapping a Thopter, attack with th my Thopter and take the last card out of his hand, which is search for Ascanta. So I just disenchanted it with the Cryptic command. Then um, get all my mana back and play Brea and immediately I'm able to kill his if I want to. But after thinking about it, I realize who cares? I've got Thopter advantage. I've got board advantage. What I want to do is sit on Muddle the Mixture and make sure it stays that way. And I'm rewarded for that decision when he goes for an Abrade and I'm able to Muddle that thing. So he kills my Brea, but that's not really doing too much against an active Sword of Feast and Famine. So he's going to have to chump block yet again here if he wants if he doesn't want to let me untap all my mana. So I'm going to go ahead and cast Brea against an empty-handed opponent. He decides to go ahead and sack and kill my Brea, but he uses mana sources to do it, so he's off the Brea plan pretty much. Um, I go ahead and push everything but the Snapcaster, and knowing, of course, he's going to trade with the Thopter. And like his life is precariously low at this point. He's at 13. I am off counters right now, and he thirsts, throwing away Oust and Counterspell and takes a him wonderful for me. The two cards in my hand probably weren't as good as whatever he might have countered, but yeah, that's cool. And I top deck Jace. How gross. All right, charge up the Relic at the end of his turn. On my turn, I cast Brea, of course, tapping out to do it, but I'm going to get all that mana back and smashing with everything but the Snapcaster again. I only push it forward because when I right-click and choose Attack All, it's easier. Right-click, Attack All, untap the Maid, un unattack with the mage is faster than click ammo one at a time and post combat of course i get and now that his bray is dead and he's he's uh, traded it away for mine i get to play a jace and then my opponent's at five with this insane board in play and uh despite the fact that he fiery confluenced away multiple permanents uh, i'm able to win that game pretty handily uh just as a matter of you know, he inquisitioned me on turn one and fiery confluence me later. His deck looks almost like it's a carbon copy of the tri typical Brea deck that you would see versus mine, which is, you know, a lot closer to the deck style of play, even though for this format, it's had to adjust itself some. And um, uh, so I was very satisfied to, to get the win. Now, if you're wondering what I'd do with this Jace here, there's a couple options. I could zero and try to find a counter because if I do, then I, I win for sure, right? I could plus it and tuck away anything he has. But if he has two, if he has runner, runner, so if his top two cards are both cards that are going to get him out of this situation, that might not be good. It's low likelihood, but there's the best play, which is I can minus one and just pick up Snapcaster. And if I do that, the only thing that's going to get him out of this is basically a, a uh, card like Toxic Deluge or, you know, Snapcaster Fiery Confluence, something that sweeps the board. By the way, Snapcaster Fiery Confluence would be the best. Like, if I plus Jace and tucked away and his next card was Snapcaster under that, then killing my sword and killing everything I have in play, plus uh, dealing uh, me some damp, uh killing my, sorry, killing my Relic and Sword and all of my creatures would be super savage, right? So anyway, the play is... Jace, bounce cryptic, and then muddle the mixture, whatever he does. And at that point, he's 100% done. So 
Um, if he actually had a giant play like, I don't know, Inferno Titan, which doesn't really matter, but if he did, I could also snap remand it. So that was how I was going to lock that one down. And we move on to the next game against Skyder. I don't know how good all these games were, but um, these were some practice games with the with the reconfigure. So I wanted to run some practice games before I got back in and finished the um, the the uh, currently running league. I, I would prefer that I actually had the current deck in the current league that I've got going. I actually have the previous build, but um, you know, can't do anything about that. So my opponent's got, apparently people just love Painter, Servant, Grindstone. I guess it just steals games or something, but fortunately Bray is pretty well positioned to deal with that for, well, any number of reasons. Um, but my opponent, having seen his hand and seeing he missed a land drop, I just uh, get early Bray down, tag his mountain with a Vindicate, and uh, my opponent says something about it not being fun, and he gives up. So fair enough. Of course, being painter servant grindstone isn't exactly fun for me, so I guess that's uh, I guess that's all right. Anyway, so my next opponent is playing Cedris, the Trader King, which gives card creatures in his graveyard unearth. So I assume he's going to be playing a lot of maybe Reanimator or something along those lines, or potentially um, he's playing I don't know uh, Aggro. But when I don't see a lot of threats, I'm thinking. Okay, so it's got to be Reanimator, right? So anyway, I've got Tithe, and what I really want to find, you're going to see one of the worst draws ever here. What I'd really like to do is I'm, I'm using Brea to test for counters uh, because I don't want to trade it for a Nahiri. Nahiri's looking really valuable right now where I need to uh, fix what's going on in my hand plus maybe kill something huge. He uh, Faithless Lootings into a Noxious Gearhulk, which kills Brea, and then Animate Deads, well, he Animate Deads the Noxious, which kills Brea. Uh, for my turn, I go ahead and fetch a Sword of Fire and Ice. Now, I, I could go get... So this was kind of questionable. I could go get Clamp. It might draw more cards in, in the short term, but I think Sword has a potential to draw more in the long term. It also puts my opponent on a clock, and it helps me out with things that he might have that, like, um, like there are cheap creatures who can who can uh, uh, reanimate things from the graveyard. Um, and so Sword of Fire and Ice may help with the, some of that. Anyway, my opponent clones his Noxious Gearhulk, kills my flyer, and I, I get a Nahiri down and kill one of his clones. He he then conscripts away my Nahiri and takes out one of my cards, but he can't kill the sword because it, it's only tapped artifacts. On my turn, um, are we going to bug? I hope not. Yeah, we're going to bug out. Well, that's funny. Okay. Anyway, um... So on my turn, I end up getting Brea down and killing his Noxious Gearhulk. And uh, we, we play through the rest of the game, but uh, w what it comes down to is that uh, my opponent does eventually scoop, but on the turn he scoops, I, I tell him to check out my hand. It's seven lands. I drew nothing but lands off this sort for the rest of the game. I just drew land after land after land after land. Fortunately, it's a fast clock, and so is Brea. And uh, I was able to just beat my opponent down. Um, and win that way because I had no other options. There was nothing else I could do. And never did I want to draw a scroll rack or a way to go get it more. Oh, I, I, I take that back. There was one other card I drew, and that's the one that made him concede. It was Painted Pact. And funny enough, so my opponent was tapped out um, on the turn when I made that comment to him when I drew the Tainted Pact. So my hand is just all lands. I attack more lands. But I packed, and I'm packing for Ravages or Armageddon because my opponent's low. He had um, tons of lands in play, but, um, but uh, you know, it was going to buy. I'm hitting him with a sort of uh, Fire and Ice. So obviously, like, Armageddon super favors me, right? So I packed for Ravages or Armageddon, or I was willing to accept a Scroll Rack. If I had hit Scroll Rack with, I had eight cards in hand and all of them were lands, or seven in hand, all of them were lands except... No, it had to be eight because I had the Sword of Fire and Ice. So eight cards in hand. They're all lands except Tainted Pact. And I'm like, okay, if I hit Scroll Rack, I'll keep it because it's basically three mana, draw eight cards. Um, Armageddon or Ravages. So I packed. And I go all the way down to 15 cards in my library before I find one of the three cards that I mentioned. I exiled, like, I'm throwing away Jaces and I'm throwing away, you know, Forbids, which is a little silly because I had so many garbage cards in my hand but i didn't want to i don't want to keep forbid and then have my opponent um like i just wanted to end the game you know anyway it was crazy 16th from the bottom i find an armageddon but having said that i armageddon or ravages and i, I ravages and um 
you know, again, even with only 16 cards left in my deck, the board position was unstoppable. And a handful of lands after an Armageddon is still a pretty good effect, too. So move on to the next game here, and I'm playing against Kess. Token counter. He thought Seize is my... I thought he'd take my Thought Seize. He takes my Crucible. So I thought Seize him back. And his hand is kind of awful. He's got a Swamp. Then two counter, a counter spell, a Confluence, and a Go for the Throat. So Go for the Throat will do nothing against me. Counter and Confluence are looking for mana. He also had a Latinum's Legacy, which I guess he was intending to use to fix his hand. But that being the case, he probably should have Thought Seized away my Thought Seize. Anyway, um, he never finds the blue to have had been able to cast it anyway, but if he had, I'm sure he might have regretted that decision anyway. And uh, for me, I draw a bunch of lands in a scroll rack, another time where I'm really happy to see scroll rack. So I'm about to fix my hand, um, you know, because on the next turn I get to draw a, another card and then scroll rack and see four brand new cards plus fetches. So I get to see four new cards next turn plus four cards on the subsequent turn. So, uh, Going to be in great shape there, but he, he doesn't stick around long enough just because the, the mana screw is real. And lastly, I get to play against Bouchant. And this is it for the day. I get a first turn land tax, which is lovely. He's playing Slime Foot the Stowaway. So, thinking about it, a slimy foot just doesn't sound very appealing to me, but um, a land tax does. So, I get a tax down early. I'm going to play Wasteland here, and I'm sitting on Forbid, because this is the turn he can play his commander. As much as I'd like to play Talisman or something else, instead of his commander, though, he just plays, like, some weird, not-too-strong uh, card if he doesn't have his commander in play. For my turn, I get to draw a Remand, which means I can play my Talisman safely. Remand him up to eight cards, causing him to discard. So it was counter-target spell, draw a card, your opponent discards, which is amazing. Opponent plays the land and then it comes into play tapped and replays Slimefoot. I Snapcaster remand it back again, which is a great way to just buy time and draw some cards. Trade the Snapcaster for his uh, poor 2-2. Two -two. Draw extra cards off the land tax since he enabled me with that fourth land. And let's see if we can strand that commander in his hand. Armageddon, land, pass. There are two more lands that I can tax for. Opponent does have a one drop, but it doesn't produce mana, so I'm not feeling too bad about that. For my turn, I go ahead and play a Baleful Strix, draw a Skull Clamp and pass, but I'm sitting on Spell Pierce. I don't want him to crop rotate into something good or uh, play land rampant growth, something like that. So I'm going to sit on the Pierce rather than just running the Clamp out. However, Brea is too much of a tempo swing. I'm not going to sit on the Pierce for this turn. He didn't have anything last turn, so I might as well assume that it's fairly safe to go Brea and just for tempo. If I untap at this point, 100% I win. Well, he realizes that, draws, doesn't find land, I assume, and scoops it up. But, you know, if he did, you know, like I said, there's two more lands in here for tax purposes. I found a scroll rack, actually. Um, this was just getting crazy. I could have Dak Faden away the lands or whatever, forbid them away. But with Skull Clamp to keep my hand full, um, the amount of card drawing in my hand is just ridiculous, right? I could draw four cards off Clamp, two off Dak Faden, and then I can draw a brand new hand of like seven, eight, nine, or ten cards off a scroll rack to boot. Um, pretty gross. Anyway, lots of fun too. So hopefully you enjoyed watching these games, and hopefully I'm able to finish this event, potentially play another one, maybe have some more interesting things to show you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Actually, this deck it's very fun, um, but I do realize that it may be fatiguing for those of you watching it who want some variety, and I do promise I will get to the variety. I just need some time, and this course I'm at is long, and I've already stayed up too late, and I've got to run at 5 a.m. So with that, I will have to say good night, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.